morning. You're listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff, and this show is all about alternatives, alternative choices, natural, holistic, biological choices in dentistry. I've been practicing holistic dentistry for more than 20 years. I've been a dentist for more than 30 years, which seems absolutely incredible. It's a long time to do anything. And I have a lot of clinical experience and I have a lot of knowledge about alternatives. I've been um, studying and learning all kinds of different ways to view um, medicine and dentistry. And today I want to talk about root canals for a couple of reasons. One main reason is that there is a new documentary that's been put out and it is available on Netflix. I didn't look to see where else it's available, but probably available in other on other streaming networks as well. And the movie is called Root Cause. And it's actually, aside from a couple of minor points that I don't agree with in the movie, it is an excellent movie. And I think that it is well worth watching. It gives a, an excellent overview of why root canals are controversial, when the controversy began, and what to do about uh, teeth that are dead and dying. And I've talked about this issue many times on shows, and you can go back and look at, uh, listen to archives. This is radio, listen to archives. And I have uh, a number of shows on root canals and also on replacing missing teeth when people choose either not to have a root canal and then have the tooth removed, or uh, they are already missing a tooth for whatever reason. Sometimes teeth are <clears throat> have to be removed and a root canal isn't even an option. And I'm going to talk about root canals and what the controversy is, why they're controversial, and what you can do about it. But I, I think this is a very important topic. It is something that, like a lot of issues right now in medicine and dentistry, uh, it's one of those Pandora's box kind of things where as soon as you start learning about one controversy, all of a sudden, all of the other areas of dentistry and medicine begin to to sort of open up and reveal the historical arguments for and against certain philosophies and certain treatments and procedures. And from there, you start to look at, well, why isn't this common knowledge? Why isn't this part of our history that we learn? There are certain historical events that have led to these controversies certain research that was done, et cetera, people in history that revealed information about all of these topics, and, and we don't get to hear about them. We don't, they're not in our textbooks. They're, I went to dental school, and I did not ever once, I mean, it was 35 years ago, but I didn't ever once hear that root canals, well, actually, I take that back. There was one point where they talked about something called the focal theory of infection. And they didn't really tie that or connect it directly with root canals or any other treatments. But they said the focal theory of infection had been debunked and disproven. And that we, you know, that anyone that talks about it or thinks it's valid is a quack. And, And that was the end of it. That was the end of the discussion on that theory. Now, the focal theory of infection is that when you have an infection or a problem in one area of the body, that it can affect other parts of your body. And I don't mean systemic, like the bacteria get in your bloodstream and flow around your body. I mean through acupuncture meridians. Like if you have an infection in a particular tooth, if that tooth is on the same meridian as your pancreas or your liver or your small intestine, then the structure that is likely to have kind of a mirroring health issue would be 
another structure on the same meridian as that primary infection. I actually believe it can go both ways, however, and a lot of times um, dental procedures get blamed for other things that happen in the body, but it can go both ways. If you have an infection in your liver or your whatever, small intestine, let's say, and something is wrong there, some kind of dysbiosis or inflammation or problem or injury, then that can affect everything on the meridian involved on the same meridian with that structure, including teeth that happen to be on that meridian. And in this movie, which is called Root Cause, they do talk about meridians, and they talk about different ways to test these meridian systems to see if um, there are associated structures in your body that are um, also having problems or, or being blocked if a meridian, an electrical impulse on a meridian is being blocked by something. And frequently the things that, <clears throat> that we do as dental treatments apparently can block the transmission of energy or electricity uh, through that area. And I think in some cases the body will reroute and redirect just like with any, like if you're missing a tooth, um, that's an amputation of sorts. And I, I think that the body can do a workaround in some cases. But th it is possible to test these meridians, apparently. And they do show a couple of different ways that these things get tested in the movie. So I, I don't agree with everything that they say in this movie. But it is, I, I mean, I, I agree with the basic premise in the movie, which is that when the nerve tissue inside the tooth dies or is infected, it can die from trauma or infection or, yeah, ma mainly those are the two ways that the nerve, the pulp tissue inside the tooth, we, we call it the nerve, but it's, it's the pulp. And the pulp includes nerves, blood vessels, connective tissue, everything. It's just live tissue. It's just soft tissue like anywhere else in your body. And when that tissue in, in the internal cavity of the tooth, which is a pulp chamber at leading down to canals, the canals lead all the way down to the tips of the roots where they connect with um, the rest of the circulatory system, lymphatic system, everything, nervous system. And if that tissue becomes necrotic, then in dentistry, we, we are taught, in the mainstream of dentistry, we're taught that you can remove that necrotic or infected pulp tissue, disinfect the tooth, fill, if you fill it correctly all the way down to the tips of the roots with the proper material, and then restore the top of the tooth so that it doesn't get brittle and break and it's nice and strong, like with an on layer of crown, then that tooth is good to go. You can keep it and it, you can chew with it. And the only part of it that was really dead was the internal soft tissue. But that is not necessarily true. And the tooth itself becomes colonized. And apparently 100% of these things are teeming with microbes when looked at under a microscope. And the controversy isn't anymore whether these root canal treated teeth or dead teeth are colonized. The controversy is how toxic is that? The, the waste product that these various microbes that live in the tiny microscopic tubules of a tooth like that, the waste that they give off, is that toxic enough to be a concern? And many studies, this is the kind of annoying thing about how we dentists are trained in dental school. Uh, we are not told about this huge body of research that's been done that shows that the toxins from these bacteria that live in the microscopic tubules of dead teeth, uh, how toxic they are. And they are very, very toxic. 
So we are taught in school that there's nothing to worry about and that once it's done and it doesn't hurt anymore, it looks okay on the x-ray, feels okay when you chew on it, uh, you're good to go. And we're not told about all of this other research. As a matter of fact, we're told that there isn't any research showing anything else. And apparently there is quite a bit of research, which I've known about for a long time. And uh, this research was done like a hundred years ago. So just because it was done a long time ago doesn't mean it isn't valid. Um, but because of the ramifications and the possible outcome of this information really getting out and how it will impact uh, people's choices and how dentistry is done, um, it's, it's possible that this information has been hmm, kind of kept undercover because it's pretty inflammatory, shall we say. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, go into a break here in just a minute. Uh, today I'm talking about root canals and I'm talking about the movie Root Cause. If you have questions about any of the topics that I talk about, including root canals, which I'm talking about today, um, you can give our my office a call in Issaquah, 425-427-8899, or you can reach us by email, appointments at naturaldentist.com, to ask questions, make an appointment, and find out uh, what our office is like and see if it's a place you want to go. All right, I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff. You're listening to Dental MD, and I'll be right back after this break. pre-diabetes one in three that means it could be you your football buddy your football buddy or you your best man your worst man you your dog walker your cat jogger while one in three adults has pre-diabetes with early diagnosis pre-diabetes can be reversed take the risk test at do i have prediabetes.org that's do i have prediabetes.org Wait, did they just say one in three adults has prediabetes? That's 33.33333% of adults. That means it could be me, my boss, or my boss's boss, or me, my favorite sister, or my other sister. That's seven members of my 21-person romantic book club. <gasps> Wait, the one in three could be me, my karaoke partner, Carol, or ugh, my karaoke enemy, Jeff. I'm going to take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. So how long has it been since you've been to the dentist? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I know going to the dentist can be tough, but did you know that healthy teeth lead to a healthy body? I know what you're thinking. All dentists are alike. They lure you in for the free exam or, you know, complimentary cleaning. And before you know it, wham, huge dental bill. And did you even need all that work? Well, why not try a different approach? Natural Dental Health Associates in Issaquah specializes in taking care of you. Their easy, no gimmick, honest approach to dentistry will have you forgetting you're actually in a dentist's office. And the best thing is, they're all natural. Yep, no mercury, nickel, or other harmful chemicals are used. Click on your media player now and get started on the road to better dental health today. Or call 425-427-8899. Natural Dental Health Associates is a proud sponsor of the Dental MD Radio Show, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on Alternative Talk, 1150 a.m. Conversation you won't find on the rest of the dial. Alternative Talk, 1150. You're listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff. And today I am talking about root canals and I'm going to talk about the movie Root Cause because I think people should go ahead and view that. It is very, it's very, it's very well done in a lot of ways. And the information in that movie is largely accurate. 
And I don't agree with, I'm going to always keep saying this, I don't agree with every single thing that they said in there, but the, the basic premise that root canal root canal treated teeth um, pose a hazard to your overall health. And in the movie, they go into all of the reasons why that might be and ways to test to see whether a particular root canal is causing health problems. And it is, um, it's not easy to find people who can test for these things. I'm actually considering looking at some of the methods and equipment that they show in the movie to see whether it's something I can acquire and use to to test for these things because it was uh, it was very interesting there was one that was like an electronic dousing um, mechanism and that one <laughs> that one was um, the most interesting and then they also talk about um, electro acupuncture according to vol and that's v o l l and that's another way to check um, for blockages on um, various meridians. So in the movie, at the beginning, they, they do an emotional hook. If you are dental phobic, you're going to want to close your eyes and block your ears because at the very beginning of the movie, after you see the trauma occur, then they say, well, if you don't know what a root canal is, we're going to show you. And then they have really loud drilling and they show a, an, a long pointy instrument uh, entering a bloody tooth. And I, I just honestly, I don't think that's necessary. I spend a lot of time trying to help people who are phobic and that particular movie maneuver where they manipulate you emotionally to get your attention. I just want to give everybody kind of a heads up on that so that when you start to watch this movie, you, um, you're you forewarned. And that comes near the beginning. Uh, and I, I just recommend sort of looking away and plugging your ears during that. Uh, if you're dental phobic or you really just don't feel the need to be emotionally manipulated before being informed. And then after they're done with that bloody and gory display, then they go on to talk about the science and the concepts behind uh, the reason that they made the movie. So in school, we are taught that if the nerve or the pulp inside of the tooth is dead or dying, that you can remove that out of the tooth, clean and shape the canals, and there's a canal in each root. Molars have, premolars have either one or two roots. Molars, your grinding and chewing teeth in the back, have three and sometimes four canals. And the front teeth, the cuspids and incisors, have one large canal. So, it is, the front teeth are simpler to do. Molars are much more difficult and you have to open wider because you have to be able to reach in with long instruments to clean all the way to the root tips. And so molar endo is, um, is a process and they can be done very, very well. But even when they're done very well by even, I mean, all dentists are taught to do root canals, but there are, there's also a specialty area in dentistry called endodontics, and that just means endo means inside, and dontic obviously refers to the teeth, so the inside of the tooth. And there are, there's actually a, an official ADA dental specialty, endodontics, where these practitioners have received extra training, and they agree to limit their practice to just root canals, and... They use microscopes and all kinds of fancy equipment to check for cracks in the roots and all sorts of things to help um, diagnose. And even if somebody with specialty training and lots of experience does the root canal treatment 
and it's done expertly and as perfectly as it could possibly be done, that tooth will still, if it isn't already colonized, it will become colonized. It will become colonized because there are bacteria in your mouth that will invade through the tubules and get in and basically reinfect that tooth. Now, teeth cannot be sterilized, and they, can, they become colonized. But we don't really know how long that takes to happen. Let's say a tooth dies from trauma, like it's, it's hit or bumped or is um, repeatedly under too much chewing and biting pressure. Like if you are a severe cr- clencher and grinder, you can really cause a lot of sensitivity to your teeth. You can cause little micro fractures, and you can actually eventually cause teeth to become necrotic, the pulps inside the teeth. Um, if you've ever been in a fender bender and accidentally like just clapped your teeth together, that like sometime down the road, months or years later, you can find cracks and pulps that are dead or dying or have been dead for a while. And nobody knows that it happened during the, that fender bender or, um, motor vehicle accident. But that's one of the things that sometimes can happen. That's a type of trauma experience. So if a tooth is becoming necrotic because of a crack, there is a point where that crack is too far down the root that you won't even have a choice of a root canal. An endodontist or a dentist who knows how to look for those cracks will refuse to do a root canal on a tooth, and, and that tooth will be condemned to be extracted. But if the pulp dies because of trauma and it isn't cracked down the root, uh, then that tooth may not be infected at that point. And a root canal may be chosen, especially if it's a front tooth or a tooth that's holding up a bridge or something like that, an important tooth, that if it's lost, the jaw joint will be unstable or you'll lose a, a bridge that you had in there that was already replacing some other teeth. Or it's a front tooth and, and, and it shows and the gum tissue has to look perfect because you want symmetry. These are, you know, these are very difficult choices and it's a very personal choice whether to have a root canal and keep a tooth that, where the pulp has died. Now, let's say it's a tooth that died from trauma. That is not an infected tooth yet, but apparently they do become colonized and the bacteria do move in. We don't know how long that takes. In the case of the gentleman in the movie, who I believe is actually the filmmaker as well, it becomes clear at the end of the movie that the gentleman that's um, experienced all of this and gone through all of the um, telling his story in the movie, <clears throat> that um, the tooth died from trauma, and it wasn't until about 10 years later that he begins to have health problems, and after a long search, because after that many years, who's going to like say, oh, maybe it was that tooth? You know, it's been 10 years. Why would you think it was that tooth? And So he goes through a long journey trying to figure out why he's having health problems. And eventually these unusual and obscure testing methods do point to that it's a dead tooth. So um, if it's not infected at the time, apparently it can take a while for, and also if you don't have a lot of other toxic burden, This guy was young and healthy. He didn't really have much else that we know of from the movie uh, that could have been causing his health problems. So it took a while to figure it out and and zero back in on that it was one of these, this tooth. So, um, but if a tooth dies because of deep decay and it's infected and it dies because the pulp tissue on the inside is invaded by the bacteria that are in the decay, then that's a different story. That's a tooth that's infected from the outset. But like I was saying, if you're very young and healthy and you don't have a lot of other toxic burden, it actually may be years before any health problems show up if they ever do. 
There are people who live their whole lives with multiple root canals and never really have serious health problems, or if they do, uh, it could be from other causes and they get treatment, or maybe they're just getting symptomatic treatment, but that's, um, you know, that it takes a lot of research to figure out and correlate these things. All right, well, we're heading into time for the next break, and you're listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff, and I'm talking about root canals today and the movie Root Cause. If you have questions, give us a call, 425-427-8899. That's my office, Natural Dental Health Associates in Issaquah. And you can also reach the front desk, appointments at naturaldentist.com. You can email us your questions and uh, set up an appointment by either calling or emailing. All right, I'll be right back. I'm Dr. Anthony Lazowitz, and this is Climate Connections. In Michigan, investing in energy efficiency is paying off for the climate and the wallet. To meet state requirements for reducing wasted energy, Michigan utilities have implemented a range of energy efficiency programs. For example, some offer customers free energy audits and rebates for efficient appliances. The energy efficiency programs are funded by a surcharge on customer utility bills, but for every dollar they're charged, customers have saved, on average, more than four. The cumulative effect of the efficiency programs between 2009 and 2016 was a net bill savings of $3.3 billion. That's Ariana Gonzalez with the Natural Resources Defense Council. She says now the state is working to ensure that energy efficiency programs reach low-income homeowners and renters. She says lower energy bills can free up a little extra money for other necessities, such as groceries or rent. We see energy efficiency as having a huge impact on people's everyday lives. Annually, the savings may be around a couple hundred bucks for a homeowner or renter and thousands of dollars for a building owner. Each month's savings can really add up to make a difference. Climate Connections is produced by the Yale Center for Environmental Communication. Learn more at YaleClimateConnections.org. Do you make a positive difference in the world? Do you have a talent, philosophy, base of knowledge, product or service that you know could help a lot of people if only you could reach them? Join Alternative Talk 1150's family of broadcasters and start walking down a fruitful path. As host of your very own program, dial 425-653-1150 and find out just how affordable it can be to have a show on 1150 AM. That's 425-653-1150. Alternative Talk, we have an opportunity waiting just for you. An alternative to everything else on your radio dial. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back. You're listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff. Today I'm talking about root canals. Root canals all the whole hour. All right. And... There is a movie called Root Cause. If you're just tuning in, I'm talking about the movie Root Cause, which is now available on Netflix and may be available on other, I'm not here to advertise Netflix, it may be available on other networks as well, other streaming channels. So do look for it. And the movie goes through this one person's experience where he has trauma to his front teeth one of the teeth the nerve is impacted to the degree that it can't recover and he gets a root canal treatment on that tooth in order to keep his tooth and 10 years later he begins to have serious health problems and it takes quite a while and a long journey through a lot of healing modalities. First he starts out with mainstream and then he ends up looking at alternatives because nothing is helping and he has a long journey through many alternative uh, treatments and philosophies, which is really, it's true. This People do go through all of this. I have heard patients talk about every single one of those different kinds of things that 
that he did, and he goes through it in the movie, and it's actually kind of amusing to watch. He does it sort of um, in a fast way. He shows boom, 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 all the different things he tried, right? But nothing helped. And finally, he goes for another test, and somebody figures out that it could be the tooth that he had a root canal on. So then they go through all of that, how they find it and what to do about it. And they talk about um, Weston Price. And Weston Price, people who um, have been listening to my show have heard that name before. And he was a dentist. And about 100 years ago, the American Dental Association funded Weston Price to do research. And he did research in a number of different areas of dentistry. So people who know about nutrition have heard the name because he talked about what kinds of diets various primitive societies on earth, which there were more of those 100 years ago than there are now, and which ones didn't have tooth decay and dental problems and crowding of the teeth, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what were they eating? What what did that society eat? And what he found on the nutrition side of things is that even if they were vegetarian, they were including insects in their diet and they were including grass-fed uh, products from grass-fed animals such as butter and milk. And they were also fermenting their food. They were preserving the food through fermentation which preserves all of the enzymes in the raw vegetables, but breaks it down through making it basically into like a sauerkraut type of, you know, pickling of vegetables, but with live microbes, not, not killed and pasteurized, of course. So those were some of the things that he discovered uh, and also that uh, most of the societies that he looked at weren't vegetarian and uh, none of them were vegan. Some were vegetarian and most of them included high fat animal and fish um, products in the diets. So that was the nutrition side, but he also studied uh, root canals and he, they, they talk about this in the movie. He took teeth that were dead um, that he would extract, and he would take that tooth, and he did this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. He would take a tooth out and put it under the, surgically put it under the skin of a rabbit, and that rabbit got the same illness. If it was arthritis, the rabbit got arthritis. If it was pancreatitis, the rabbit got pancreatitis. Whatever it was that that human had that had that tooth, not only did that rabbit get the arthritis, but he put that same tooth, he would take it out, put it into the next rabbit, that rabbit got arthritis, take it out, put it in the next rabbit, that rabbit got arthritis, same exact ailment. So that kind of shows that the tooth that's been filled in the root that the pulp is gone, has particular toxic properties that will ha give that same toxicity to whatever body that tooth is in. Um, this kind of goes against the idea that it depend that the ailment you get depends on what meridian that tooth is on. So that's another sort of thing to point out here because they talk about this in the movie that meridians are the way you know uh, whether it's connected, you know, to a particular ailment, a particular tooth on that same meridian. But Weston Price's research was not meridian-based. He just put it under the skin. He didn't put it on a particular meridian to get that same illness. So it seems like maybe the meridian concept has some validity but not total validity. So th I think more research is needed in that area. But they don't talk about that question that I have on that. Uh, in the movie, but they talk about meridians and then they also talk about his research, putting it randomly under 
some part of the skin of animals and then having them get the same illness. And he did this in many rabbits for many illnesses that the humans had. Um, the research is just, there's a lot. So um, that research is not, was not talked about in, um, in dental school when I was in school. They, but that is what the focal infection theory is, is that if you have a particular infection in an area that, that could affect distant parts of your body uh, based on where that infection is. So anyway, that is, you know, the Weston Price research, that, that's just two areas where he did research. He also did research on um, proper extractions of teeth and he did research on um, structure and posture. So a lot of what we do orthopedically to expand and develop the arches and get jaw posture correct and joint alignment and neck posture and all of that, how that all relates uh, to what we're doing with the teeth and how we finalize the bite position when we're doing pretty much anything, especially orthodontics and orthopedics, that also comes from Weston Price research. I mean, this guy was one of the geniuses of the early part of the last century, along with a number of other geniuses. There was a real renaissance happening at the time. So when it comes to extractions, they also talk about this in the movie, because after he has his extraction, and they, they do go into the idea that the ligament, the periodontal ligament, perio just means around. So the ligament that's around the tooth, that's holding the tooth to the bone, and that's holding the gum tissue to the tooth up at the collar around the neck of the tooth. There are lots and lots of tiny little filaments, little periodontal ligaments. And when you have a gum problem, a gum infection, that means that the ligament that's holding the gum tissue tight against the tooth has broken down and bacteria have invaded and moved in under the gum tissue and are trying to invade deeper and deeper and live on the root where they're protected from toothbrushes and floss and other things that you might try to use to clean them out of there. And that ligament goes all the way down around the root of the tooth. That's why when you bite on your teeth and put pressure you feel a little bit of springiness in the tooth. And that little springiness is because of the little ligament sling that's in there between the tooth root and the bone. Now, that tooth can be taken out, and some of that ligament will stay in the socket, kind of stuck to the bone side. And that is, I, it is my understanding that everybody who is trained to extract teeth or remove teeth from the mouth is taught to curette or kind of gently scrape out all of that ligament because it can get in the way of the bone filling in properly and healing. And if the bone fills in across the top of the socket and can't fill in down below, then you end up with a mushy hole in the bone. And that is... They, they talk about this pretty extensively in the movie, kind of toward the end of the movie, but they do go into this pretty extensively. These holes in the bone are, there's no blood supply there. It's a necrotic, mushy hole. And it's, it's like a little cyst. And uh, these usually just sit there in the jawbone very quietly, not causing any problems, just like most people's root canals. They don't believe they're causing a problem until they have a big health problem that can't be solved, and then finally somebody says, oh, maybe it's that root canal. But the same thing is true for these holes in the bone. Now, the word cavitation means hole, and the word cavitation has been commonly used to refer to these little unhealed bone mushy bone holes underneath where teeth used to be. Um, 
they are sometimes thought to be osteomyelitis. They harbor bacteria and toxins because there is no blood supply or lymphatic supply to these mushy holes, unhealed bone. And so they just sit under there, festering, and they're pretty nasty. They're usually small, but they can be large. Um, In the oral surgery texts, they are referred to as Ratner bone cysts. So they are a real thing. But whether or not these affect other parts of your body and can cause illnesses and ill health, that's where the controversy is. But, of course, if a root canal can cause ill health in another part of your body or create a a health situation that is um, a problem, then so can these unhealed, mushy, necrotic, and usually infected bone deforming, bone malformations where they the bone doesn't fill in, and so it's just really immature, unhealed bone and necrosis. Necrosis is the key because any place else in your body, and they do point this out in the movie, and I, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that uses the G word, but any soft tissue that is necrotic in your body is called gangrene. It has to be soft tissue to be called gangrene, but when you have soft tissue that is necrotic, and it may also be infected, it is called gangrene. And the only part of the body where this is thought to be okay to leave there is a dead tooth that's had a root canal filling done. So we are heading into another break, and when I return in the last segment, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on um, extractions and uh, bone holes called cavitations. All right, so you are listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff. If you have questions about this or any other topics that I talk about on the radio or you would like to make an appointment, you can give us a call, 425-427-8899, and you can reach the front desk by email, appointments at naturaldentist.com. I'll be right back after this break. So how long has it been since you've been to the dentist? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I know going to the dentist can be tough, but did you know that healthy teeth lead to a healthy body? I know what you're thinking. All dentists are alike. They lure you in for the free exam or, you know, complimentary cleaning. And before you know it, wham, huge dental bill. And did you even need all that work? Well, why not try a different approach? Natural Dental Health Associates in Issaquah specializes in taking care of you. Their easy, no gimmick, honest approach to dentistry will have you forgetting you're actually in a dentist's office. And the best thing is, they're all natural. Yep, no mercury, nickel, or other harmful chemicals are used. Click on your media player now and get started on the road to better dental health today. Or call 425-427-8899. Natural Dental Health Associates is a proud sponsor of the Dental MD Radio Show, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on Alternative Talk, 1150 a.m. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address, all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Seattle, Tacoma, Antwerp? That's right. We're streamed worldwide on our app and on the web at 1150kknw.com.
Welcome back. You're listening to Dental MD. I'm Dr. Jessica Sapoff, and today I'm talking about root canals. So I want to distinguish between uh, teeth dying from trauma and teeth dying from infection. And the infection can actually come from two different sources. If you have a cavity in the tooth that is very, very deep, that is so deep that the bacteria and or the toxins from the bacteria can get into the pulp tissue, which is the <clears throat> soft tissue deep inside your tooth in the chamber of the tooth and then extending down into the canals of each root, if the bacteria can and, and their toxins can seep into that and irritate the nerve, then you'll start to have pain in the tooth. And if they actually invade, then the tooth and the pulp tissue inside the tooth will begin to become infected and necrotic. And there's no place for that swelling. Of course, it's going to cause inflammation. There is no place for that inflammation to go. And that's the reason why teeth hurt so much when they're in this process of dying. Later, once the tooth is dead, you don't have pain in the tooth anymore, but you have pain in the bone below the tooth where that infection has exited the tooth into the bone at the root tips. But there's another way that infection can happen inside of a tooth, and that is through what we call accessory canals in the roots. So if you have most of the accessory canals are little offshoots from the main canals where the nerve tissue lives, and these accessory canals can be small or large, and they are they're horizontal. They're not vertical. It's impossible to get in them with the files and cleaning instruments. They can sometimes have a little bit of the cement or filling material get into them and, and um, seal them when a root canal treatment is done, but not always. And a lot of them never get filled. So they continue to have uh, dead tissue, which is gangrene, like I said in the last segment. Um, the other way that teeth can become, that the nerve can become infected is, as I was saying, most of these accessory canals, they are in the third of the root that is the deepest into the bone. And so you can get a little bit of gum disease and it won't walk in to the pulp tissue, all these bacteria living around the collar of your tooth. Generally, they can't get into your tooth to kill the nerve unless those bacteria are deep enough under the gum that they find an accessory canal and walk in and kill your tooth. You can have a tooth with no tooth decay that dies because a gum infection got deep enough to reach one of these accessory canals and then the bacteria just walk right in and kill your tooth. And this is called a perioendo lesion. That's when your tooth dies because bacteria get into the tooth through accessory canals in the roots. Some people have accessory canals that are higher up and you don't have to have very deep gum disease for the bacteria of the gum disease to kill the tooth. But most of the time you have to have pretty severe gum disease and bone loss around the tooth for these bacteria to find any accessory canals to enter the tooth. So I just wanted to distinguish that, that if you have mild gum problems or small or medium decay, that you don't necessarily need to worry too much about the nerve dying because the nerve is way inside the tooth and has several millimeters of um, protection before those infections could possibly reach it. All right. So I want to talk about a couple of other things that they talk about in the movie. And in, at one point, one of the um, people that is a dental professional says that dentists believe that it's, that it's best to save teeth at any cost. And they make it sound like dentists are, want you to keep your tooth even if it means your overall health is going to decline. And that is not exactly true. Because dentists don't know and don't believe that a root canal treated tooth could possibly 
in any way, shape, or form affect your overall health unless you unless it's not done properly or it fails and bacteria from the tooth get into your bloodstream and cause a, a bacterial infection in your body because it gets into the bloodstream. But they don't understand that a perfectly quiet and well-done root canal that is a chronic infection and not an acute infection, that it's just asymptomatic, looks okay on the x-ray, feels fine when you chew on it. They don't believe that that tooth could possibly cause you any health problems. So they're not recommending a root canal and that you keep your tooth even if that tooth could kill you. They are not thinking that. It's not deliberate. But the way this was said in the movie, it makes it sound like dentists want you to keep all teeth infected and dead um, no matter what. And it, it the, the implication, I, I just didn't like it because I really don't think dentists... Uh, are evil like that. I think they're misinformed and um, maybe ignore information that is valid and ought to be considered. But aside from that, I don't think they um, mean at all that uh, your tooth is, keeping your tooth is more important than your 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 health and your life. But that was the implication. I, I didn't like that. That's one of the things I <clears throat> wasn't, crazy about in the movie. And another thing that they talked about was using three-dimensional radiography. And that is, they, they refer to it as cone beam, cone beam, 3D cone beam. And, and that is how it's generally referred to. I think there's a more technical term for the type of x-ray that it is, but for, for the purposes of the movie, calling it a cone beam is, um, I'll just refer to it that way as well, because that's the way they referred to it in the movie. But it is a three-dimensional rather than a two-dimensional picture. So we can actually look at that area where that tooth is. We can do whole head. We can look at jaw joints. We can look at one area of your dentition. We can isolate a quadrant, like lower left, lower right, upper left, upper right. We can do an area and um, do a 3D picture of that area and then turn it around and around on the screen to look at it from different angles. Now, that is a great thing because you can see these Ratner bone cysts or commonly called cavitations, and you can see abscesses around root canal treated teeth. You can see areas of the bone around these teeth that are that look like uh, pockets of infection around these teeth. And you know, that's, that's very good to be able to diagnose that. It is higher radiation than the other kinds of x-rays, but you can see more. You can see more things, and you can rotate it on the screen and look at it from different angles, and sometimes that's the only way to see cracks in the roots. It's another good thing that you can use it for. Um, and another, and by the way, my office does have a 3D cone beam device for use, big x-ray machine, um, which is a new machine and has the lowest radiation possible, but still a 3D image does use more, does expose you to more radiation than a 2D image. But sometimes it is uh, necessary to do that. Now they also talked about ozone treatment, and we do have ozone available at the office as well, and we use that to assist healing. It can be irrigated around the gums, it can be injected into areas where there and literally the ozone gas can be injected and it just turns back into oxygen and gets absorbed right into the the area where you want the disinfection and healing and i also will flow it around all of the gum tissue where it penetrates right into the deepest part of the pockets and kills the biofilm and the bacteria that are invading and living on your roots if you have gum disease and gum pockets so we have ozone treatment available for assisting healing and disinfection of gums and treating gum disease. And that's another thing that they talk about in the movie. And they also talk about different ways to replace teeth, and I've done other shows on this, so I want you to refer back and look at the archives and listen to show a show that I did not too long ago on the replacement of teeth that have been removed, and that would be removable teeth or partial or complete dentures, 
t- uh, bridges, different types of bridges. There are more conservative bridges, and I talk about that. Drilling away less, like less drilling is better because the more drilling you do, the more likely you're going to end up with another dead tooth. So less drilling, and there are ways to do bridges very conservatively, very conservatively with less drilling. Um, and then there are also implants. And they talk about implants in the movie, and they can sometimes be a problem. So when you watch the movie, you will learn a little bit more about the different types of implants, ceramic versus metal, and I've also talked about that in the past. So those are basically, that's my critique of the movie, but overall I'm very much in favor of it. It is wonderful disclosure of this far too long hidden secret controversy in dentistry about root canals. So do watch the movie. It's called Root Cause. Look that up. And uh, thank you very much for listening. I am Dr. Jessica Sapoff. You're listening to Dental MD. If you want to reach my office, it is 425-427-8899. And you can reach the front desk by email to make an appointment or ask questions. Appointments at naturaldentist.com. I'll be back next week. Thank you for listening. Someday you wish upon The views expressed on this program are those of the host.